Okay, so this is a presentation that is meant to be an introduction to live audio events. First, I want to tell you what a live audio event is. It is a real-time audio broadcast, and it happens primarily on, of course, radio, but we are not going to talk about radio tonight. We are going to talk about LinkedIn live audio, which is, of course, the platform where most of us have met and where a lot of us on this call focus our activities. And that's also the platform that we'll use for a presentation uh, or for a test later. There is also Twitter spaces. So if your Twitter app is up to date, you will actually see that there is a feature that is called Twitter spaces, very powerful as well. Elon Musk, who recently uh, acquired Twitter, was uh, live on Twitter Spaces and I was actually in the room when he did that. And it was really impressive to be with these very important thought leaders in tech in a live event. And like every app that has a live audio feature, there is the possibility to have moderators in the room. So usually you have one person who starts the live and then you have others who help moderate the room. And these people are given special privileges. They can, for instance, say, oh, I see in my audio room, I have Jason and I want Jason to come up on a virtual stage and I want Jason to be able to talk. So moderators have that power to help uh, organize the audio event. LinkedIn is uh, a little bit easier. That's why we will also choose that for tonight's demonstration. Another app that is very powerful in audio events and that has started this trend is called Clubhouse. I highly recommend getting familiar with it. You need an invitation to Clubhouse. So if you are not on it yet, you can scan or scan the QR code on your screen with your phone, or you can use the link and then you get your app to your smartphone. It's a smartphone only application and you can go and listen. There's clubs on virtually anything you can think of and you can be a passive listener. You don't have to talk at all if you don't want to. The only time you need to talk is if you decide to host a room to be the owner of the room. But in any other occasion, you have to actually do something proactively if you want to talk. Nobody can force you to talk, which is um, good when you maybe don't feel ready for that yet, or you feel like you don't have enough to contribute, or you are in a situation where you just can't actively participate, like uh, maybe you're driving or you're, you're doing chores or you're going for a walk. Anything uh, is really good with audio rooms. That's also one of the advantages of audio. It's a lot less involved to participate. The barrier of participation is very low. So Clubhouse definitely... Um, there's great names in all, all fields of industries, thought leaders that have clubhouse rooms where you can, if you are often on there and you follow people, you, you cannot, like, it's totally possible to be in the same room with a, a Grant Cardone or a Gary Vaynerchuk or even uh, an Elon Musk. All of that is possible. 
You can use them for small conversations in an intimate group or even uh, large interactive discussions. Uh, you can hold monologues um, or you can favor interaction if you want that. I have been in very interesting conversations that only had four to five people, but I was also on stage in rooms that had 500 uh, audience members and up to 10, 11 people on the stage. Again, the virtual stage is usually in the upper part of the app when you're on the smartphone and you are in a virtual room. It's usually divided into the top part where you have the speakers and the lower part where you have the uh, audience members. And that's when we say we go on stage, it just means that you are moved from the audience to the speakers on, on stage. And that usually happens when you either start or host a room or when someone brings you up, someone who has special privileges brings you up on stage and then you can participate. You can use the audio rooms for uh, interviews or just general discussions or even workshops. Some people, if you have ever thought about organizing a community or even a paid workshop, it's definitely possible to use a audio room for that. Uh, on Clubhouse, for example, which is a, a free app, by the way, on Clubhouse, you can have private clubs or even houses where um, you can have an invitation only house and um, you can definitely have conversations happening that are only uh, privy to people who may be part of your community. I have also started a Shanks Academy house and I believe everyone here is has been invited to that. Uh, if not, you can tell me later. It's also possible to use them for Q&A sessions. If you have, for example, office hours in your, or just general um, kind of sessions where you give advice on a topic of expertise, you can definitely use your audio events like that as well. Now, why should you use audio events? First of all, it is easier to produce because you don't have to worry about what you look like. I know for a lot of people on camera, that is a big issue. They are worried about not looking uh, the way they, they feel comfortable. So that part goes away completely. You don't have to worry about your background either. Uh, maybe you just don't have a fancy studio yet like others, or you are in a situation where very often you have people or even children and pets uh, walking around in your background. Uh, and that problem also goes away. You don't have to prepare any presentations. It's just re really you, you have your topic in mind and then about uh, three to four keywords uh, top uh, speaking points that you have prepared and then you can launch your audio event the reluctance to be on camera also goes for um, your audience or your participants when you have live events um, well, first of all, often the way live video events are designed, it's kind of hard for the audience members to join in. Um, but on audio events, they're all designed where people can easily show to you that they intend to participate in conversation, usually by raising the hand on LinkedIn it is, uh, we'll see that later, it's a raising your hand feature. The other big advantage is low data requirements in terms of internet speed. 
if you are uh, somewhere where you don't have high speed internet because there is no image transmission, no video transmission, it is much easier to have that event running. Uh, I sometimes find myself preparing a meal or doing some chores and I still participate uh, in an audio event and it's very successful because it's truly just you talking about something that you are knowledgeable or conversational about anyways. We do these things day in, day out with our friends and colleagues and then when we take it to a social media platform, we get very nervous about it, including my, uh, myself. I get nervous too, but you have to tell yourself it's really just something we do very often. We talk and we, we all know how to talk. Right now is very favored by algorithms. At the time we are recording this, this morning, I spontaneously decided to open a LinkedIn audio event and the title was the power of public um, announcement, I believe. I forget the title now, but I know that I created it 15 minutes prior to starting it. And I had, again, this was spontaneous. I had uh, at a, any given moment about 12 people in my audio event now for anyone who has tried to get people on a live event we know how difficult that is jason for example here who is in our audience had prepared a live event that was a video webinar for one or two weeks in advance i believe and he had difficulties getting people to attend. With a LinkedIn audio event, right now, the algorithm may push people in your room uh, at a moment's notice. What was also very powerful for me this morning was that I had people participate in a meaningful way. I asked the audience, uh, can someone hear? Uh, right now is your chance to step up and make a declaration of what you want to do in 2023, what you want to commit to. And I had a woman from India who stepped up and said, I want to get into podcasting. And she uh, spoke a little bit about her background. The audience encouraged them. And uh, I also, after the event, um, I sent her some resources. Um, you will also find that when you speak on someone else's stage, whether that is in on LinkedIn or on Clubhouse or any other platform, people will follow you because they get to hear you and you will always say something that will relate with someone in the audience. Sometimes it's the way you say it, sometimes it is just your voice is very soothing to the person sometimes it's the content that uh, what you say it really resonates with them sometimes it's everything it's just really a good way for people to get a feel of who you are and they will follow you i it happens sometimes to me that i'm just on stage and i'm i haven't even spoken yet and people start following me you have a very high repurposing, uh, content repurposing factor with audio events. Um, if you are, for instance, on Clubhouse, you can record, uh, it's automatically recorded. You can later download your sessions. And I know people who just turn take that recording and turn it into a podcast you that you can upload it to youtube and you have an 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 audio only youtube recording or you can upload it to a podcasting software again it's highly interactive it's very easy for people to participate they don't need to have a, a camera they don't need to have a, a nifty 
microphone or anything, anyone who has a smartphone can participate and is easy to understand. It's also for all of us uh, possible to often mention your call to action. Uh, depending on the app you use, you can even post a link that your room members, your audience can go to at any moment. On LinkedIn, it's easy to tell your audience, click on my face and then go to the link that is in my bio. Um, it's definitely something uh, you should mention at least two to three times during your event. So every 15 to 20 minutes, you should, first of all, ask people to share your event. And then you should also hint at something you do, some an offer that you have that they can uh, go and click on your profile and find a link. Um, be subtle about it. You don't have to push it too much because I know that most of us don't like to appear salesy, but at the same time, uh, don't be afraid to tell the world what you have to offer. Um, it is okay to talk about your offer if you have earned to um, promote, right? So you give, 10 times and you ask once that is kind of the rule of thumb so in my mind if you have taught for 10 minutes then you can ask for a second for people if they want to take a look at what you can do for them go to an a link So it's really not all that difficult uh, to do this, although it might seem difficult in your mind, it is not. And here's why. You have to understand that, and that's what I have observed uh, in many successful audio rooms. You pick an easy subject that is related to your field, but it doesn't have to be a very complicated, deeply involved subject. Like, for example, um, one that probably matches with everyone's um, field of expertise here on the call would be um, changes or goals in 2023. I know it's very cliche, but it is something that people like to talk about. And it is something that it is easy to have a conversation around. Um, what happens when you have these conversations that are easy enough for the general public to participate in? So you will see you have particip participation and you have people sharing. And then very often, you don't even have to say that you offer something or that you have something to sell. Um, people will almost, if they're really interested in who you are, they will find that out on their own. People are not stupid. They know that you are a professional and that you have something uh, they, can, uh, they can participate in. So very often they'll find that out on their own. So keep it general. Some other good rooms that I have been in recently are, for example, the title was The Dark Side of Entrepreneurship, where really the topic was um, exactly that. Um, I have been in rooms that discussed whether um, relationships or children or what have you were helpful in a business or not. I have been on rooms that talked about um, the power of daily content creation. I, there's like all kinds of really easy topics where you can pick something and then say, okay, I'm just going to facilitate a conversation around it and um, I'm going to see who participates. Uh, it's almost... If you get comfortable with it and you have you have five, six people in the room, it's almost something that 
starts taking a life on its own. The only difficulty that you can encounter is uh, if you have someone um, in your audience that comes on the stage and then starts being very self-serving or starts attacking you or just starts to being an annoying human being. But if that happens, you as the host of the room, you have the, the power at any given point to put them back in the audience. So you don't have to let anyone um, ruin your event. You should uh try for your first audio room to again you 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 take an easy general subject and then you prepare three speaking points in your mind and then you ask your you you ask your audience to contribute so um the reason you want to have the three speaking points prepared is just in case people will choose to not contribute which could happen and According to Murphy's law, you know, it might probably will, um, but that shouldn't be a problem because in your mind, you just, it's like um, an educational opportunity that you offer uh, to the community and you go over your three speaking points that are tied to your general topic. And if you get to the end and nobody has participated in the conversation, so be it. But you have delivered some valuable information and that's it. Uh, you don't have to force it to go on too long. If, you know, there's nothing more to say, you can stop it. But you will also find that very often uh, it it's kind of hard to stop it on time because once people participate and everybody wants to uh, throw in their two cents, then it's it's just a very dynamic situation and people need to be told, okay, we need to stop this now and pick up the conversation later. Um, every platform has a way to share the event and you want to ask people uh, several times during the event to share it with their network. People will do that. Um, it's something that at the beginning you might forget, but uh, just like the CTA, the call to action, every 15 minutes or so, you can say, if you enjoy this conversation, please make sure you share it. And then um, depending on what platform you use you want to explain how you shared on that platform on linkedin most people are going to be on their smartphones and there are going to be three dots in the top right corner you click that and then um, they get to see the details of the event and then they can share it straight to their wall or they can share it within a message to uh, others who they think are going to be good participants and participants in the conversation. You can prepare your live audio event. Again, you can schedule it a week in advance and then uh, utilize the link that the event has in your uh, newsletter or in your social media communities. Uh, or like I do, I uh, sometimes posted on telegram in the telegram community so uh, it's it's definitely possible to also use it in that way okay so you want to go to your uh, let's see to your home so click the home button Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll go off Zoom uh, when we start this. So uh, now where it says events, click the plus. Okay. All Under right. your mouse. Yep. So um, you don't have to set a cover image. Uh, we can skip that today. And then in the event format, you'll use LinkedIn audio event. And then 
your event name is setting goals for 2023, for example. Okay, so um, you can start it at uh, 3.55. You can... Okay, and then you can let it go for, um, for like half an hour. Even if we end early, that is not a problem. Ending early or going over is not a problem. And here you can say, for example, um, join me in setting goals for 2023. Doing it together is so much more fun. Or use your own words. <laughs> Okay. So here you can actually set multiple speakers. So you're always going to be the host, but you can definitely have several of us be speakers. Now, not having us there at the beginning doesn't mean that we cannot speak later, but it just it's a good way to have us all pinged as you start. Okay. And then I don't know that I. You might only be able to select connect existing connections, but um, Reese will find us. So okay. click next. Okay. Posting. Yep, post it. Here we go. Okay, so perfect. So, uh, Kelly, as you join your own event, you don't have you can do that at, when we are off the Zoom call. You can okay. do it on your uh, laptop if your mic is set up and everything. Uh, you can also do it on your uh, smartphone okay now what is very important when you when you start this you'll see a button that says as soon as you click join you'll go into the pre live room mm -hmm. and then you can start then it says go live and as so as soon as that happens everyone uh, everyone else in the app when they join they need to raise their hand because it's only by and then kelly you will see our faces have hands raised and then okay. you you tap or select us and bring us to stage okay to speak when we're ready to speak or just when we get in the room When uh, in this instance, you can uh, do that right away when we all get in the room. Okay. Uh, but of course, for your audience members, you would only bring someone on stage should you decide that you want them on stage and when you are ready for them to speak. Okay. Otherwise, they can just keep their hand raised until you are ready. 